Okay, today we're going to make the rocket scientist invented condom style stinger for your Crossfire Diversity Nano or whatever. It's 915 megahertz tuned. Um, these guys know what they're doing. Uh, I just nod mindlessly and say, yes sir, may I have another? Um, but anyway, uh, the first thing, what you're going to need in order to do this Silver Sharpie is what I use, a dental pick, $1.99 at my hardware store, Amazon probably has them, a razor blade, some swabs, uh, some flush cutters, some, I use gray electric tape, lay out a piece of electrical tape on your bench, mark 78 millimeters off in two places, I just use an old piece of frickin' whatever I got to draw mark a straight line so I measure those off at 78 millimeters boom 78 boom 78 and then down here I got 30 a little shy of 30 maybe 32 millimeters is my tail that'll get me underneath the platypus and into the diversity nano receiver as seen here um, so that's how I have my setup rigged. Um, basically, this is one that I just uh, I just completed. I have not trimmed the feed end to total length yet because I still have yet to uh, secure the ground plane in place. But as you can see, I got the ground plane right at 78 millimeters. It's exactly what you need. And then once I once I secure this and get it all, I use super glue and I'll show you that in a second, but once I get that done, I'll trim this to length and then uh, put it in the feed tube or put it in the uh, forever tube. So what do you get? You get these extensions um, from the guy on eBay, Wi-Fi expert I think his name is. I'll put a link in the video, but these are U.FL extension cables that are like 24 inches long. So just put them together like that find the center, cut it, okay, set the other piece aside, take my lead, um, I lay it out here like this, oh, the other thing you're going to, so, let's go back to what you're going to need, alcohol swabs, dental pick, razor blade, flush cutters, pen, tape, the alcohol swabs, um, basically what you got to do here is just clean this thing and the only reason you need to do this is so that the sharpie will stick to it just just temporarily enough to give you um, sort of a, a guide but anyway lay the thing out here like this Put, tack your lead down here or hold your hold your UFL connector at the at the lead mark take your silver sharpie and put a little mark right at where the lead, you can kind of see that the Sharpie doesn't really want to stick to it, but just get a mark there. Then up here, this is where you're going to cut um, the vinyl coating back. So I, I put kind of a fat mark there, and I'm going to cut right at the center of that Sharpie mark. And then once you get those two kind of laid out, what I do is I come out here maybe 10 millimeters beyond the 78 millimeter mark and then I just cut this. That's all I need right there. And a little extra bit is going to give you some room to work with. The other thing I need are geeky freaking mad scientist goggles. Oh, I dropped my cable. Um, I need mad scientist goggles because I'm old. And uh, I got to have reading glasses just to see this close. So reading glasses plus these give me the superhuman vision that I need to be able to do this. So anyway, back to the task. You got your, you got your cable laid out. You got your marks. Okay. You know that on this mark here, we're going to cut right at the center of that mark. Okay. So I've, I've taken my sort of super thick mouse pad and I cut a little groove out of it with the razor blade, just brrr, cut a groove. 
And that just gives me something to kind of hold on to here when I'm doing the, the next step, which I'll do here in a minute. But for this first step, let's just um, take the razor blade and find the, the center of the, of the mark that we put on here. So find the center, roughly there. And you just kind of roll the cable underneath the razor blade without putting a whole lot of pressure on the cable. So all you're trying to do is just cut through that that outer sheathing and it doesn't take much to do it but once you get there kind of keep your eyeball on it and with your thumb start pulling towards the end right at that cut and you don't you don't want to screw up this side you want to try to leave that as sharp of a cut as possible so just find the the little score with your with your thumb and start just sort of digging at it to expose and as you can see here I've exposed just a little bit of the of the uh, ground shielding and that's all you need to get a start on it so just start tugging on it a little bit and work your way around till you've kinda of gone all the way around the thing and exposed the ground shield below the cut. And you want to try not to screw up the ground shield at all here because this is kind of critical. If you get to the point where there's a little tiny bit of, of, the, uh, of the, and this is where this little groove comes in handy, but if you get to the point where you got just a little bit of the, of the uh, vinyl coating sort of hanging on for dear life you can sort of massage it back and forth with your thumb to break it but at that point once you get a nice sort of break in the action all the way around and you haven't screwed up the the ground cable just sort of hang on to the UFL inside of it and just try to sort of pull it off of there and you should be able to should be able to just slide it right off like that okay so now we have the exposed ground shield. We didn't screw up any of our ground shield at all. Come back here, lay out our cable again just to make sure we're at the 78 millimeter mark. And we are, we're a little long here. Just, we're, but that part doesn't really matter. What matters is that at the end of all this, you only have 78 millimeters of this ground shield rolled back down over the lead here and you, you'll trim off the excess down here when you're done. So at this point I kinda I kinda grab the very tip of it and just push it and then I start kinda pushing down the ground shield towards my cut down here and you just start bunching it up as much as you can and some you can then once you get this little little end exposed here of the feed line just sort of grab that and start bringing everything down towards the towards your cut so you get it nice and sort of bunched up down here and when you got enough of it bunched up then what you want to do is you want to sort of roll and push and you, you don't want to try to force it all at once you want to get as much of this bunched up down here as possible so that you can get this around the corner because and sort of roll and work your way around it till it till it till it starts to go and once it starts to go you can kind of feel it it sort of gets easy again and you just sort of keep pushing and make sure that you you got this opened up up here but just keep pushing this down a little bit at a time get up here and once it gets past, once you get past the feed line part of it, it kind of gets a little easier, but just take your time and work your way right at the base of the roll for the most part. And once you get down here, just sort of massage it and comb it all out. Kind of roll and comb, roll and comb, being very careful. So sorry for the pause in the video action there my camera my phone just stopped recording uh, but anyway um, 
just keep sort of massaging this all down and you want to comb it down towards the UFL connector and just sort of pull, you know, sort of massage everything and comb it, smooth everything out. Don't put a lot of tension here. This is where you want to hold, you want to hold that so you're not putting any tension there so you don't break that. But just keep combing it, kind of smoothing everything down that direction towards the bottom. Don't use a lot of pressure, but go around the entire diameter, circumference, um, with sort of a combing action. And then at the very end, do a little bit of combing up here to kind of, kind of smooth everything out. And at that point, you're good to go. So we come back down here to our mark, and we measure. And if you did it like me, you got exactly 78 millimeters, and you won't have to trim any more off the end down here. The last one that I did, which is this guy, Okay, I just made two of them. I, I made one just to see if I was going to be able to do it on video for you or not, but I can. I'm doing it. So this guy here I made, and I ended up having to trim about that much off of the end of the ground shield in order to get this at 78 millimeters. This one here, I just sort of got lucky, and with the excess that I left up here at the top, it just worked out to be 78 millimeters. That was a sheer stroke of luck. That ha that was not me planning that out. That just sort of happened that way. But we're there. We're at 78 millimeters. So what I can tell you is that at the at the edge of this, kind of be careful down here. You don't want to drag too much of it down there. You don't want it to be too long. You don't want it to be too short. You want to try to really hit that 78 millimeter mark. But the, the, the one that I, this is the one that I got lucky on. No, is this, this is the one that I got lucky on. This one here that I got lucky on. Wait, this is, I'm sorry, I'm confused. This is the one that I got lucky on. I can tell because I didn't cut it. This has got a much straighter cut to it. But this guy here what I did was I left what looks to be about just maybe 14 millimeters, 14 and a half, maybe 14 and a half millimeters extra, maybe 15 millimeters extra beyond the, so 15 millimeters beyond the 78 at this end is what I left here, whereas this guy which I ended up having to cut, I left a lot more. You can see this guy is like, I left, what, 25 mil, 24 millimeters here. So it looks like pretty close to the magic number is 78 plus 78 plus whatever you decide your lead is going to be, and then leaving 15 millimeters beyond that, cut this at 15 millimeters, long and you'll get right at 78 millimeters it looks like if you do it the way I did it. Anyway, there's there's two of them. Uh, one that I just rolled up for you on camera. It doesn't take that long. It's just a little bit of fidgety fucking around to kind of get it there. Um, lay yourself out a piece of tape like this. Measure it out and put marks on it because it just makes life a lot easier. Um, but that's it. That's how I do it. Okay, so... I meant I didn't mean to say peace out yet. I meant to kind of finish this thing up. So now we've got what we confirmed to be 78 millimeters on these things. What I do, and seems to work on the two that I built prior to these two, um, is I use super glue at the end. So again, just sort of flatten everything out and use a little. You don't want to go bananas here. You just want to drop and sort of paint it on the edge sort of roll and paint and get some down onto the PVC and then sort of just set this guy aside and let her cook till that stuff's done. You don't want a, a bead of that stuff to form because it might make it kind of difficult to get into the, um, into the, uh, into the forever tube. So make sure you don't go too thick on this stuff. Sort of roll it around making sure that you've that that you've combed it down here
before you did that. And then just let that let that um, let that super glue kind of cook. I'm gonna try to maybe absorb just a dab of it off on a paper towel over here, just to get the the sort of bulb off of there at the end. And then what else I'll do is I'll put a little dab up here to start just to kind of keep that alive and not uh, under any kind of pressure when the thing's sort of bending back and forth um, flying around. So I'm just sort of paint a little bit of super glue on that and then I'll set that aside and let it cook, let it, let it dry. Let's do the same thing to the other one here because these are two good antennas at this point. Also, you're going to end up, you're, you know, when you're all done here, when everything's sort of glued up and you're happy and your length is right, you're going to end up trimming this off right at the end of your 78 millimeter mark. I just left these long now because I don't feel like trimming them right this very second, but you get the idea. Same thing here, just paint a little super glue down on the edge, very sort of carefully and slowly. Just give yourself a little, little bit of super glue lub down at the bottom here. And then what I do once that's cured, after I um, trim everything up, is I'm gonna I'll paint the whole thing with super glue. I paint the entire ground shield with a coating of super glue like this to uh, to kind of give the thing a little bit more rigidity and um, and uh, make sure that that ground shield doesn't go anywhere. But anyway, you get the idea. Peace.